So you can see here I've got this drawing um, and they're actually all blocks here. So if I just hold my cursor here, I can actually see these are all block references. And they're hydraulic symbols that I tend to use over and over and over and over again. So I want to um, I want to be able to, to have a, a resource or a mechanism to quickly re reuse these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my view tab here and I'm actually going to bring up the tool palettes window here. So I can see my tool palette window um, is brought over here. Now I'm actually currently in um, plant 3D and I don't know why they, it seems to be stuck here. Let's just give it a second to think about what it's doing here. Um, so I'm actually in plant 3D and that's why um, I've got this particular different style of, of tool palette. But what I'm going to do is just come in here and I'm going to create a new palette. So I'm just going to right click on it and say new palette. And I'm going to call this um, hydraulic symbols. Now, just because I'm in Plant 3D doesn't change anything. I mean, this is the AutoCAD tool palette and it's a mechanism to, re to reuse resources. So whether it be um, blocks, XRAFs, images, um, line work, um, whatever it happens to be, you can quickly go through and you can add it to your tool palette for reuse in whatever drawing you're working on. Now just one important note before I start using it is that if you add a block to the tool palette, it is this drawing that it's going to be looking for to pull out that block. So this becomes the resource drawing. So if I was to delete this, the next time I go to insert that symbol, it's going to say, I can't find that block. Where did it go? So you may want to store this in kind of a, a common location. Now, if I take a look at this drawing right now, I can see that I don't really have any layers in here. So just real quick, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. I'm going to call it red and I'm going to obviously going to set the properties to red and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to set that layer active and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. Now maybe I'm going to draw a lot of lines on the red layer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line and pick it so my grips um, appear and then I'm going to click and drag and I'm actually going to add that into my tool palette. So now notice that if I, if I set this to zero here and I click line, notice that I can come in here and it automatically sets it to red and the minute that I hit escape, it goes back to whatever the layer was before. But it hasn't just brought the line, it's actually brought all the common 2D geometry tools. So I can click a circle, it's going to place it on that red layer and we're off and, and running with it. So maybe to be a little bit more descriptive about this, I'm going to right click on this, I'm going to say rename, I'm going to call this red and I've just given it um, you know, a little bit quicker of a, of a identifier. I'm going to right click again in here and I'm actually going to add a separator um, because I want to start adding some blocks. So what I do is I select the block and I don't pick the grip because the grip is grips, right? I mean, you're going to start modifying it um, and moving it around. So I'm just going to click anywhere on this block and I'm going to drag and drop it and actually add it into my tool palette. I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag and drop and add that one to my tool palette. And I'm going to take this one and I'm going to drag and drop and add that to my tool palette. So you probably get the idea pretty quickly there how I can add those. Now I'm going to take this one and I'm actually going to copy it and I'm actually going to paste it right into the same palette. Now I could copy and paste into different um, tabs here. I mean you can have as many tabs as you want. But what I want to do here is I'm going to take the second one here and I'm going to go into the properties of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this per, um, compressor 90. Because what I want to do here is I actually want to rotate this 90 degrees and I want to scale it 1.25 times. So it's actually going to um, scale that up automatically for me. Now auxiliary wise here, notice I could actually scale this based on the current plot scale or the current dim scale um, of the active dimension style. So I actually will scale that block based on that information. I'm also going to come in here and I'm going to change this so it actually gets inserted onto the red layer instead. So I'm going to call this the um, red compressor 90 because I've set that information. Also notice I can come in here and ask it to prompt me um, for the rotation as I insert it and I can actually ask it to explode it as I insert it as well. So I just made some changes there and let's just make this a little bit wider on that. Okay, so let's make it a little bit too wide. All right. So let's just click here, let's create a new drawing 
And what I want to do is I want to insert that symbol and you can see there currently is no layer red. If I go into the insert, I can see that there's no blocks. You can see, right, nothing up the, up the sleeves here, no tricks going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the air regulator and I'm going to go and insert that into my drawing. I'm going to click the compensator and notice I can come in here and insert that into my drawing. I'm going to click the compressor and I'm going to drop that into my drawing. I'm going to draw, grab the red compressor and notice that it's rotated 90, scaled 1.25 times and placed onto the red layer. So it's just like that how you can go through and, and now I can use these and insert them wherever I want. Any drawing, any location, however I need those two to fit. So let's refer to as the tool palette. Now it's a palette, so I mean it can be auto hit, it can be um, resized how you want it, it can actually be docked um, to the side of, of, the, of the UI, so it's kind of always there when you need it. Now another method of working with this with block data is the AutoCAD Design Center. So from the View tab here, I'm going to click Design Center, and what this is, is this is the ability to reuse um, content from any drawing. So it's kind of the, the opposite to the tool palette. So the idea is I can browse for drawing and I can grab layers out of it, I can grab layouts out of it, I can grab blocks, I can gra grab multi-leaders. Um, you know, this is a Planet 3D, I can actually grab section views. If you're an AutoCAD architecture, there'll be um, other information. So any AutoCAD based information, you can go in there and kind of pull out of the drawing and quickly insert whether you have that drawing open or not. Now in this case, I do happen to have an existing drawing open. I have this, I'm gonna click um, blocks here and notice the blocks I can see within it. So what I'd really like to do is I'd like to insert this valve here. So I can either just drag or drop it. What I can do is double click on it. It starts the block insert command. I'm gonna click okay. I'm gonna insert that into my drawing. Now let's come in here and let's actually um, you know, go into the folders list here. Let's actually browse over here to my D drive. Let's actually make this a little bit wider. So let's go into the D drive here. Let's go into my vault working folder, my designs, my ACAD. Let's grab this drawing here. Let's go into the layers because I want to take these annotation layers and I want to drag and drop them and add them to this drawing. So now look at this new drawing has all those layers in it. Okay, now the last little thing I wanted to show about the um, design center is more than just adding them to your drawing, is you can actually build tool palettes out of this pretty quick. So what I can do is take this hydraulic pneumatic drawing here, I can go into my blocks and say create tool palette. And what it's gonna do is build a new tool palette for me and basically extract out every block and make it a listing on here. So just like that, I took that hydraulic pneumatic drawing, this one here, that had all my blocks, and just boom, there's my new tool palette. So that shows you how you can have like one drawing, drop in all your different doors, right? This is my doors drawing. And then you could use that and quickly build this palette so that you've got all the, all the door symbols in there. If you go back to that, that drawing and you make changes to it, well then the next time you go and use that, that palette, um, it's, it's gonna have that new reference. So let's let's do that. Let's come in here. Let's just quick make a quick change to this one. So I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this block in place, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, let's actually delete this. So what we're gonna have is our symbol is gonna look like that, and I'm gonna add a line to the side here. Okay. So I've made my changes to this, and I'm happy with how that symbol looks. Okay. So I'm gonna save the drawing. And I can see that the, the symbol hasn't updated here automatically. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna update the tool image. So that way what it does is kind of pings the drawing and says, oh, you've changed. I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna update that. Now looking at this tool palette, there's actually quite a bit going on in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click here on this tab here and I'm gonna go into the view options because what I want this to be is a little bit smaller and I want an icon list, icon with text list and I'm only gonna apply that to the current tab. Or maybe what I wanna do is I wanna to go to my view options and I want a icon only, I'm gonna click okay. Or what I can do is go back to my view options and say, let's go with a list view, let's go pretty small here, I'll click okay, 
and there's those particular symbols forming. Now if I come back to this drawing here, let's actually just do a quick save on this. What I can see is that that block hasn't updated because I mean the tool palette takes that block definition, drops that in there and it becomes part of that drawing. In fact, if I come in here and I go to insert another compensator, it's coming in with the definition that exists in this drawing. Well, that's not really what I want. I, I've changed and I want to update it. Um, so this is kind of the best of both worlds is I've, I've changed my, my default, the existing drawing, right? It doesn't just magically update, but I can use the tool palette. I can right click here and notice that I can come in here and I can actually redefine it. So I click redefine and it goes through and basically updates that block definition. The tool palettes are um, all powerful. And in fact, I can do the same thing from the design center. So for within the design center, I can right click on it, say redefine, and it updates those block definitions within the drawing. Now just to, to finish this up a little bit, there are plenty of locations out there on the big wide interweb that you can go and get more contact, uh, more blocks to use in your drawings. For example, Autodesk Seek, seek.autodesk.com, a free um, website. You are required to, to create an account. You can use your Autodesk account, but notice how I can come in here and actually search for AutoCAD 2D blocks. So I know I need a toilet, so I'm going to search for a toilet and it will actually come in here and give me a listing of toilets that I can um, download and use in my drawings. And these are actually manufactured specific. So I can see here, here's one from Coolier um, that I can go in and there's Revit models, but also some drawings and some DXFs that I can use in my particular drawings. Also, the manufacturer's website specifically, for example, here's the SKF bearing website. What I can see here is there's actually a CAD model associated with this. And notice I can come in here and actually download an AutoCAD drawing um, to be able to insert into my, into my drawing to, to reuse. So why redo when you can reuse? Um, definitely there's, there's plenty of, of places out there to grab content without having to um, you know, redesign the wheel.